This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today I'm pleased to have the man, the myth, the legend, the Max Cavalera of Soulfly on the show. Max, how you doing today, brother? Thank you. Good to be here. Recently, Body Count, the metal band fronted by Ice-T, released the music video for the song you collaborated on and appear in the music video, All Love Is Lost. I love doing this kind of stuff, man, you know, like... Uh, jamming with other people and um, crossing over with different artists and you know I got plenty of stuff uh, you know I have Soulfly but I also have Cavalera Conspiracy mm -hmm. with my brother Killer Be Kill mm -hmm. with Troy from Mastodon and Greg from the Linger Escape Plan and um, I'm looking forward to do some more even in the future and then of course there's always like somebody like Ice-T you know ask you to be on the album you, yeah, yeah, how you, yeah, I'm not gonna say no to that. You yeah. know, it's Ice T, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love Body Count. I love Ice T's old stuff, the, the, the original gangster, yeah. all the, the early rap stuff. You know, so um, I gave him one of my riffs. That's the riff that's on the song. You know, he loved the riff, and then uh, you know we did this. He asked me to sing uh, four lines, and I end up um, singing. Kind of in my mind, I thought it'd be kind of cool. Um, I say the words hate, and each letter represents something different. I think H is for all, or A is for the apocalypse, you know, T is for terror. So um, that's what I did on the song Girl Murder a Guy, and then she writes hate on the body bag uh -huh. with spray paint, which was like, yeah. that's cool. I like that, you know, because that was, I didn't know they were going to do that. And then I just did my my uh, my parts on a parking lot uh, during this tour because yeah. they they wanted some real uh, homemade do-it-yourself kind of stuff. So they're like, film on your phone and just send it to us. You know, no high professional at all. Like really cool. Yeah. Um. So I did, and they put it, and it looks great. So I'm very happy that it came out good. Definitely a good good collaboration. I mean, the music business and your friends in the music business it's almost like a playground to you because you pick and choose the people you want to work with and you collaborate with them and you create this fantastic art it's pretty fun you know i'm, I'm being really blessed uh work with a lot of people i really wanted to there's still a little bit of a bucket list of some people i i still would like to do some stuff with but i work with almost almost everybody that i really like and um you know to me there's not really um I don't really distinguish between how famous the person are. I like their art, you know, like sometimes a band that, that's not really known at all, very underground, they're v very special to me. You know, I like that very much, you know, I like, so I, I like them, I don't, it's not about their popularity, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I really get lucky to be able to, even tours like this with Nile, you know, we're doing this, this uh, Soulfly Nile tour. And we did some other tours in the past. Uh, Return to Roots with Immolation and Full of Hell. We had Soulfly with Suffocation and um, Soulfly with Morbid Angel. We opened for, for Pantera, for Slayer. Yeah. Um, ministry, great tours, you know. So it's, it's, it's a long, it's always connecting to people, you know. And I, I like, I, I like to talk to musicians, you know. I enjoy the interaction with musicians and creating music with them. It's fantastic. What was your youth like growing up in Sao Paulo, Brazil? My dad had a really good job. He was an ambassador of, of Italy in Brazil. So we uh, we were okay. We had, you know, we're kind of like, uh, not millionaires, but... Um, at that time, when I was young, you know, like real, like seven, six, seven years old, we had a comfortable life. You know, my dad could provide, and we had a good life. And we used to like soccer a lot. That was all we cared. It was like uh, we we call it football, you know, uh, but it's soccer here in the states. And we used to go to the games every weekend. My dad would take us to the games. That's where my brother actually learned to play drums. Was on the on the games. Um, but then he died uh, tragically um, out of the blue when I was nine years old. And our life changed 360 degrees because um, he didn't really prepare anything and kind of um, there was no really like 
life insurance or anything like that. Uh, so all of a sudden, everything was gone, and we had to move to Belo Horizonte to live with my grandmother, and we had to work in like crappy factory jobs, and that's when we discovered metal. Mm. You know, that's when metal came in the picture, and it was like great because we were really angry and pissed off about how things are. You know, um, and that by that time we were really poor. You know, we were part of the like. Um, really struggling you know my mother was struggling we were struggling um and that metal the real hard metal was like the best music for an angry teenager you know that's like rebelling against all this stuff you really embrace metal that's that's one of the best things about metal i think is give you that power you know give you that um almost like uh like a weapon you know, mm -hmm. it becomes a weapon. Yeah. You know, if you if you do it right. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was uh, that was the beginning of it. So it was great. Tell me about how during a visit to Ozzy Osbourne's farmhouse in England, he encouraged you not to give up music following the tragic death of your stepson Dana and being kicked out of Sepultura. Yeah, it was. Uh, we were invited to have come to dinner at his house in England. Um, it was like a farm, yeah, it was beautiful. And uh, uh, so we, we, yeah, we went there and Ozzy's know really a lot of stuff about his uh, life is similar to ours, you know, like tragedies, you know, he had the Randy Rhodes tragedy mm -hmm. and, you know, I lived through Dana's uh, tragedy, Gloria's son, and, um, you know, I was no longer with my former original band he was no longer with Black Sabbath. So a lot of things were kind of similar. So he was really cool to talk to because it was pretty much just say, it's up to you to get up. It's all up to you, man, to get back on it, you know, and make something out of it, you know, and that's when I created Soulfly. Was, like, coming from him was great. You know, if you would have tell the, the young teenage Max that Ozzy would have give you advice, yeah. I would have not believe you. I'd be like, no, you're crazy, man. You, you're tripping, you know? You're on drugs, yeah. <laughs> but it happened, and it was it's it's really cool. You know, I, I really um, really enjoy all the times we've been with him. You know, we and we play a bunch of different times: Israel, Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, a bunch of Ozfest, and it's always been real, real nice to us. Volume four apparently is the album that turned you on to metal, among a lot of it. But yeah, it was funny because I went back to my dad's. My dad was a big fan of music, but he liked mostly opera. Mm -hmm. Italian opera and stuff and classical music but after he died me and Igor went to snoop around his record collection and we found uh, uh, we, we found the first Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin 4 and when I heard volume 4 it was like amazing it blew me away you know it was yeah Black Sabbath you know um, to me um, I think I was yeah if 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 you want anything, if you want to know about metal, if you want to start the the roots at the beginning, you have to definitely go back to Black Sabbath. Yeah. You know, it's like a, it's almost like a school of metal. <laughs> you know, uh, the riffs. You know, Tonayomi's riffs. Psh, I spent a lot of time like playing, and learning, and analyzing those riffs. You know, and then the words also. You know, Ozzy had really good words and you know, really good lyrics. And I mean, the whole band was fantastic. Bill Ward was a great drummer, you yeah. know, Geezer is a great, brother, great bass player. That fantastic yeah. combination of people, you know. So I would be lucky to, to play with them. And actually, you had my son uh, that's drumming with me tonight, Zion. We did a European tour, and for like five shows, we asked Bill Ward if my son could sit behind his drum kit while he was playing, and he did that. You don't get any better education than that. It's amazing. And now he's becoming a really amazing drummer himself you know my son's kicking ass and soul fly and doing really good drumming he got from from him from my brother you know from the soul fly drummers roy joe um you know so a combination of all of that uh roy was big on 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 zion's drumming roy was soul fly's first drummer mm -hmm. And Zion even has a, a tattoo of, of Roy's symbol tattoo on his arm, which is really cool. And Roy's in Stone Sour. Now. Exactly, yeah. And he's a good, a fantastic, amazing drummer. Yeah. You know, I really love what he, what we did, uh, especially that first record. It was was real magic. You know, it was really, really, really cool stuff. 
so Zion really like learn on the road on the ropes and he never really took uh, lessons you know it was all learning as you go along and he has a really unique style of drumming now that's um, it's kind of hard to explain it doesn't play like other drummers but it's it's cool it's like mm -hmm. unorthodox you know like like I don't even try to fix it. It's like I, I'm not even gonna try to fix you. I think you're perfect the way the way it is. It's kind of crazy. Uh -huh. It's kind of wild. You know, it's uh, uh, not 100% uh, all there, but it works. You know, uh, but uh, it's, it's, there is like some really cool energy, young energy that comes out. Of the way he plays, that I really feed on every night, you know, which it's really good. Do you still appreciate Black Sabbath with Dio? I do. Yeah, you know, even with Gillen, uh -huh. Ian Gillen, you know. Yeah, you like the Born Again. Uh, Born Again. Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, the designer, the guy, the Crusher, he made the album cover. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend of ours from England. He gave me the original, wow. and Dana was buried with it. You know, we put it in his coffin. You know, when he, when he passed away. Um, so yeah, I like Born Again. I like the. Uh, of course, I like the the, the Ozzy era the best for me. Sabotage Volume Four, um, Master of Reality. You yeah. know, those are the, the the main classics. But I do also like Born Again and the Dio era. It's cool. It's um, you know, there's they're just really good songs, man. You know, you cannot. You cannot not like Heaven and Hell, you know, and and uh, Mob Rules. They're just too good. Yeah. <laughs> it's too good. Did you ever have a chance of meeting Dio? No, I didn't. No, unfortunately not. I heard he was really cool. Whether you were famous or not, he remembered your name. Always. Yeah, it's a rare rare quality in this business, you yeah. know. Yeah. So you 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 know, I like I would like to, you know, but if we never cross paths, unfortunately, um, from the old. Uh, Old guy, you know, we, I met Lemmy, the Purple. I heard you had an interesting first introduction to Lemmy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is cool because I think my relationship with Lemmy was very different from um, other musicians. I think a lot of people just kiss his ass. And I really didn't do that, you know. In fact, I remember when I first met I I, I, I told him he was ugly, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and he was like, well, I'm, his answer was really bizarre. It was something like, um, I'm ugly now and I'm old and you're you're ugly and you're young you are some <laughs> some weird shit like that and I was like I don't know what you're talking about man but in my mind uh, it was a we were doing a photo shoot for a, for a European magazine and uh, you know I went to a party so I came with a bottle of wine I was drinking from the bottle throwing all all around you mm -hmm. know um, there's some pictures of that it's actually pretty funny but the very very first time I met Lemmy was in England we were on a European 89 tour and he was playing this video the video games that he plays you know the arm bandit things you know and i was like i got kind of drunk so i went to bug him you know i'm from brazil man we we love you man you know all this and he's like leave me alone i don't want to play my game here and then i went back to the table i was like no, i want to go back bug him again no no man come on dude just talk to me and he I had a glass of whiskey and he just poured all over my head and i was like Great! I went back to the table. Was like I just got baptized. <laughs> All the other guys were like, "You did what?" He's like, "I got Lemmy's whiskey in my head. I'm not gonna shower for like a week," <laughs> which I didn't. But it was very cool because after all that happened and all, I th thought for a while he didn't like me, you know. Um, and then we met again after Dana died, and um, he was very uh, sorry to hear about that, and it was very. Uh, from the heart that he told me that, you know, how sorry he felt for, for us and for what happened. Um, and then he said something like, by the way, be, the, between me and you, everything is great, everything is good, <laughs> you know? Oh. And I was like, cool, man, you know, that's awesome, you know, because I didn't want to have a bad blood with Lemmy, man, you know? It's like, I love Motorhead, yeah. man, you know? I just didn't want to, I, don't know, I just didn't want to just be another ass kisser, yeah. you know, I just want to have a different, uh, relationship i guess with him you know and it did happen like that so i think it's it's kind of to me it's it's more it's cooler because of that you know because of the whole thing happened after the death of your father 
and then the death of Dana, how did that change your outlook on spirituality or your personal spirituality? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been interesting, you know, it's like, um, I have a different, uh, it's, it's kind of almost like hard to describe to people because like at the same time, you know, um, like I believe in spiritual world for sure, you know, and I, but I think spiritual and religious are two totally different things, you know, especially if you're talking about organized religion and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, forced stuff. I don't like any of that. I don't like anything that's forced on you that's like not free will. Yeah, you know, I believe in free will. You have to choose whatever you like. Mm -hmm. you know? that's, what, that's what life is all about, you know. And when, I, mean, I think, you know, a lot of religion try to force you and then, uh, you know, all these, a lot of wars happen because of religion nowadays and all this stuff, you know, it's like, I, I don't know, I like to, I, I think the death of, the, even though I was really mad, like when my dad died and when Dana died, you know, kind of mad at God also, a little, mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, angry at that, you know, which I think is understandable, you know. Um, at the same time, I kind of like made me become more spiritual, and um, you know, I end up that you know the a lot of the Soulfly records. Uh, I think even even the Roots record, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, dedicated to God and stuff. Which because I thought that was kind of like kind of a punk rock thing to do because in metal it's so it's so anti God, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that actually if I think God is kind of punk you know it's against what people expect or want it you know um but it in no way i'm like uh you know a religious band or anything mm -hmm. like that I, yeah, don't, I, I don't believe on that I, you know because and that's yeah it's it's a fine line i i mean I, like I love metal, you know, and I was like, I'm not stop listening to a metal band, even if I know the lyrics are all satanic and stuff. Doesn't matter. I like if I like the music, I like the music, you know, and uh, I will listen to them. You know, that doesn't turn me off. Who do you say that Jesus Christ is? Do you believe he's God? Um. Yeah. I mean, like, but I think it's pretty, pretty different from, um, you know, uh. A, a lot of it's portray of you know I, I like the parts of the, the stuff like he's hanging out with beggars and prostitutes and stuff like that you know I think that was cool you know and that made me pretty different um, he also like uh, rebel against the, uh, uh, the you know the the rich Jewish people that were in the temple and the Pharisees the, and the Sadducees, yeah. right? And the story is pretty, you know, pretty amazing. I mean, if you just the crucifixion and all that, I kind of like to think he was a bit of a rebel. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, on that on that era, I think on that area, I think it's cool. You know, I think he was kind of a could he actually even be a metalhead. You know, in a, yeah. in a weird way, you know, because uh, metalheads always rebel against something. You mm -hmm. know, we have something always to, to rebel against, which I think is great. And, and that's what, what attracts me to, to metal in the first place, you know. And that's what I want metal to stay. I like metal to stay like this, like uh, kind of like on the edge, you know. And uh, so it's kind of like pe when people ask me, like, um, like, do you care? You never won a Grammy and stuff like that, and I really don't because I really think like those things are against the edge, you know. Uh, you know, like when we got into the metal music, wasn't wasn't for awards or wasn't for even for girls. Like girls didn't like us, you know. We were all dirty and ugly and crazy, and um, it was really for the aggression and what the music gave us, you know, mm -hmm. that pure. Uh, pure like um, adrenaline and energy that you only get from from metal and it's kind of dangerous a little bit mm -hmm. which is kind of cool you know um, so after all these years I still feel the, the danger element still there like every night you don't quite know what's going on and, and anything can happen kind of thing it's kind of cool totally 
thrive on the uh, the whole metal energy. I love, I really, really love like the crowd, and I go nuts every night. It's amazing. You do believe Jesus Christ is God, or you don't believe He's God? No, I don't. I don't think He's God. Okay. I think God is something else. Man, I know you like the Old Testament a lot, and yeah. I think I've I've like read three songs that you you talk about Babylon. Tell me what the obsession with Babylon is. Why do you relate to that, or what do you see there that? angers you or that, that attracts you to it i don't know it's almost like subconscious i mean in a crazy way who knows maybe i even in other talking about reincarnation and stuff like that i'm not the life mm -hmm. maybe i was there you know um, you never know but uh because I, I believe in all kinds of stuff you know i believe in reincarnation and stuff like that and it's like mystic you know it's like a mystic thing that you're not quite sure why you like it but you like it the visuals you know the story the place it's almost like how i i like uh, a lot of the tribal stuff it's mm. kind of like the same you know i have a i feel a connection with with the you know natives and the tribal people you know big time when we did the roots yeah. when we went to brazil and spent time with them it was amazing to all to all the way to my new record which is coming out in july which i did a lot of stuff with the navajos you know because wow. i like them a lot and i'm friends with them and i'm friends with the vice president and he's a big metal fan where'd like, you go for that the recordings was in tuba city which mm -hmm. is like full-on navajo land and then uh we we had done some stuff there earlier when we did the prophecy uh, album we did the prophecy video on monument valley you know filmed and we they had some some of the dancers on the video. And then also, um, last, uh, last year, there was a ceremony, we were invited, and we went there, and they blessed our whole family, and they had all the dancers. It was freaking amazing, really, really cool. And then in June now, we're doing, we're playing the, the show that is commemoration of 150 years of the treaty with the United States government. And the uh, and the Navajos, they're commemorating the treaty, and they ask for Soulfly to headline. Wow. And we're gonna try to film, actually, make a DVD. I hope we can, because mm. I think that's a that's a pretty cool thing. That's like something that I'm, I'll be proud to be part of it to release as a as a as a DVD. People always ask, like, when are you gonna do a live DVD? You know, for something like that is really cool. It gotta have like a different meaning. You know, to me, always my answer was always that it cannot just be a uh, just a regular show. Got to be something something about it that's that's different or exciting or exotic. And uh, this is this is it. You know, so we're gonna try to film that. I think that's gonna be really cool. How did you know Gloria was the one that you wanted to spend the rest of your life with? Because in this world, that's very yeah. difficult to negotiate. You don't. I didn't. You know. I. I, I but I really just just like her uh, instantly. In fact, the first thing she did when she started managing us was work for a whole year for free. Mm. Nobody does that mm. in this business. And I've never seen anybody else that ever did that. You know. Um, and we just fell in love with each other. We liked a lot of the same stuff. We liked the traveling. We liked culture. We like. Um, just we just spent time together and decided to create decided to make a family of our own you know and um, um and then the more the more we work together the more we realize we are building this together you know it's like a, it's a team mm -hmm. you know and it's really cool of course we fight like everybody else i, I have to say I, i've now been easy to 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 be around you know i had a lot of a lot of trouble you know especially the late sepultura years um you know i've been i've been uh pretty clean up for like 10 years 12 years you know no no drinking no drugs but i did so much of it <laughs> you know i puke on eddie vetter for yeah. god's sake man you mm -hmm. know shit who can say that you know yeah. and he didn't get mad he didn't get mad no it was cool <laughs> i mean like i was i was hardcore you know one time she bust me in europe drinking hand sanitizer no way you know she's like oh god max what are you doing it's like i'm trying to get high out of this you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's shit. love bro that's, yeah, that. that's love and she stuck by me man yeah you know? and that's like she's one of the first people encouraged me to get back at after the sepultura you know 
split up and I wrote Eye for an Eye and No as a as a, a demo tape and you know, we got Roadrunner behind it. Uh, so, you know, those people are very special, people that believe in you like that, you know, dedicate their life to you. It's a real value that you cannot never take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, and uh, you know, it's like even even I think we're I've been pretty lucky like in this business I seen a lot of guys uh, even in my band couldn't make their relationships work because of touring for so long you don't see the person blah 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 I've been lucky that I get to go on tour with, with Gloria she goes on tour with us and make sure everything well for one thing everything runs good because she's around yeah. and she's the manager she can be a tour manager I and mean, we have other people doing tour manager but she kind of does that also just for fun um, make sure everything runs smooth and we get to stay together a lot of times we get to bring our kids like on this tour we have resigns playing drums and uh rich is selling t-shirt you know my other son Igor is at home um but you know it's like uh being pretty lucky that we get to take them on tour and uh, i think We've seen a lot of the world that other people don't see. Like we go to Eastern Europe, you know, Tunisia, Siberia, you know, scary places that people are not don't want to go because they're scared. And it's awesome, man. It's awesome to go to those places and give metal to the people when they, they need it. Yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I consider myself actually kind of lucky that I get to do that with my family and build this kind of. It's 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 still like feels kind of underground to me mm. the whole um i guess cavalera empire thing and I, I like it like that you know i don't need it. it doesn't need to be real that big you know i don't have um illusions and desires of big houses or big cars and stuff like that like other people i don't have that i'm not attracted to those things you know i collect headphones that's what i like you know that's that's that that's my material uh, weak weakness you know um, apart from that I don't really care much I really simple life is good you know I don't uh, I have no desire for those those kind of big material things that a lot of other uh, musicians are kind of chasing Josh Wilbur the same producer that worked on Killer Be Killed is producing your new album do you have guest stars on it we do. Uh, one I can say uh, is Ross from Emulation. We did a tour together, and I love Ross voice. Uh, I love Emulation. Been a fan for a long time, and it was a was for me a big honor to have him on the record. There is another guest that I'm not allowed to say yet. It's kind of we're gonna try to keep a surprise as much as we can. And then there's a couple things. There's like the Navajos in. Uh, they're in two songs. The chants mm -hmm. that I recorded. It, it sounds crazy cool man because i gave it to josh and he made it even better even cooler and there's a girl from iran that plays uh an iranian instrument and she's in one of the songs doing some percussion my son igor sings on a song called feedback that's kind of like a motorhead kind of song nice like the last song of the record the record is has a kind of uh a little bit of a political feel. It's kind of like half between spiritual and political. There's a song about, it's called Blood on the Street, and it's about a, a girl that was murdered in the, in the Navajo land. And the, the story really s stuck hard with me. It's, you know, it was crazy. And it's, it's, it was such a, the whole story, man, it's, 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 it's insane this cop just kill her on broad daylight you know it's like insane and then i turn into a song because i think that's that's what sometimes that's what songs are you got to tell stories like that yeah. let people know about these things you know and then i read on, a, on the article says a lot of the, the indians and natives that get murdered people don't care because nobody really cares you define government oppression how do you see it working throughout the world you know, we live in Brazil uh, in in the seventies. I was still a kid, but it was a govern military government. You know, and uh, it's really all the way they want it. There's mm -hmm. no other way. You know, it's like one thinking: you gotta be like this, or we eliminate you. 
you're out, you know? I don't believe, I, I think that's it's not the way I see it. Like when we came here to the States, um, that's the idea that you have, that is more equal, you know, that is more, uh, you have more choices, you have more freedom. Politics are tricky, man. That's one thing that's like I learned. Through, that's why I don't have any politician friends. <laughs> you know, it's there, it's just tricky, you know, mm -hmm. and the corruption almost like sucks you in. Mm -hmm. Anybody that gets in power gets corrupted. That's why we did a song on the new record called Evil Empowered. And it's about that. It's about when you take power, when you grab that power, it's like it's an evil thing. We have to sing about, you know, this kind of stuff. I always, because I like a lot of, I grew up with a lot of punk and hardcore. And a lot of the stuff they were saying was, was to me, was like, yes, this is like, you know, the Jello Biafra lyrics, you know, and the Black Flag lyrics, you know, and um, a lot of, some of it was like European stuff. But even, even those against, you know, Margaret Thatcher and stuff like that, even that I could relate to because it's against, um, you know, they're stepping on the, on the little people, man, you yeah. know, it's like you gotta, you gotta fight back, you know, so like Joe Strummer, you know, you say, you know, fight back, fight the power and all that, you know, it's cool, man. I think music is much more powerful than people think. I think you're right. Max Cavalera, it's been great having you on the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show with Max Cavalera signing off. The Blaring Out show.